And good evening once again, everybody. Welcome to Network Associate Coliseum for game two of this three-game series between the Red Sox and the Oakland A's. The A's have taken the field, led by their starter, Mark Redman. Let's take a look at the Red Sox starting lineup brought to you by Dodge. Johnny Damon back in there for the Red Sox, leading off in center field. Mark Bellhorn at second base. Manny Ramirez in left. David Ortiz, the designated hitter. Jason Baratek doing the catching. Kevin Millar back at first base with Orlando Cabrera at shortstop. Bill Miller at third base and Gabe Kapler getting the start in right field as the Red Sox go up against Mark Redman. See the numbers at 10 and 10 on the season. The Red Sox have roughed him up twice this year in a total of eight in the third innings against the Red Sox. He's given up 11 run runs and one number to look at of the 25 home runs. And you know, Don, we saw last night the ball really fly out of here, this ball five, because it's so warm. Unusual conditions here in Oakland. That's something that's certain I think works in the Red Sox favor here tonight. Now the Oakland defense is brought to you by a New England Toyota dealers gold glover down at third base Eric Chavez making a fine play last night on Kevin Millar as he charges the ball surrounds it gets himself lined up with first base and gets the out at first base. Mark Kotze, Mark Kotze later on in the ball game getting a trap very similar to what happened against him and then he goes in and argues with ninth and third base umpire. I was a little bit surprised he did not get thrown out of the ball game for that. Johnny Damon back in there tonight for the Red Sox and standing in on the left side as he takes the first pitch of the ball game for ball one. First pitch, 7 6 Damon at 314, 14 homers and 66 runs batted in. Missing the last four games. Damon hits it high in the air down the right field line headed for the corner. That ball is back and that ball is gone. Welcome back Johnny Damon. Home run number 15 of the season and the Red Sox jump on top one to nothing. Now Johnny Damon came out early this afternoon to take batting practice and see if he'd be ready to go tonight and Don I guess the answer is yes he's ready to go. You know, we mentioned the ball flying out of here last night. Unusually warm conditions. The first batter, Johnny Damon, picks up his 15th home run of the season. How about the numbers for Damon against Redmond? He is now 11 for 18 with two career home runs. I wonder he want to get back wow. here tonight. That is his 15th career leadoff home run. And it puts the Red Sox on top, one to nothing, right out of the game. Bellhorn taking a strike from Mark Redman. Bellhorn at 267, 15 homers and 69 runs batted in. Bellhorn has reached base safely in 19 straight games. He's hit safely in 10 of the last 11 games. Now, Redman is not an overpowering left hander. His fastball will be in the mid to upper 80s. He'll throw the curveball and the changeup. Also with good numbers in short time against Redmond, including a home run. Where available, this telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your television remote. Enjoy the game. Buenas noches, amigos. Three two to Bellhorn. Foul back above the screen and out of play and a full count to Bellhorn with Manny Ramirez waiting on deck. Swing and a miss and Bellhorn strikes out. That's the change up from uh, Mark Redman working down and away from Mark well, Bellhorn. You know, interesting Redman. numbers uh, for Redman. He has had big time trouble here at the Coliseum. Three and four in the season with an ERA over seven. On the road, he's seven and six with a 2.98 ERA. That's unbelievable. And you think this is the pitcher's ballpark. Mark Redman, 30 years of age, pretty big at six foot five, 245 pounds. As he deals with Manny Ramirez, who fouls the first pitch off up into the upper deck. 
And then was acquired from the Florida Marlins. The right handed pitcher Mike New and the minor league pitcher Bill Murphy in December of 2003. It's in the midst. The first year of a three year deal. And he jumps back out of the way to even the count at one and one. Right, 317, league leading, 38 home runs, 111 runs batted in. And the left center field, a base hit. That'll get down and roll to the track and the wall. Ponce back to play, but Manny cruising into second base with a one out double. Well, Manny has now hit in uh, 12 of his last 13 games. This ball is down about knee high, but Manny gets right down there with it and puts it on a line in the left center field for the easy stand up double. Number 37 on the season for Manny Ramirez. So Manny in scoring position at second base with one down, and here's David Ortiz. Ortiz homering in each of his last three games. Big swing and a miss there. Ortiz up to 36 home runs, 122 runs batted in to go along with the 303 batting average. Ground softly right side to Mark McLemore. Rolls out Ortiz. Ground ball to the right side and on to third goes Manny Ramirez. Well, Derek Lowe returning here to Oakland, and uh, as you might imagine, yeah, really not all that welcome here after last year. And maybe a view of what is to come here tonight when he's announced heading back towards the clubhouse and hearing it from some fans. Number 22. As he heads back to the Red Sox clubhouse. Kind of a unique situation here, and you have to walk in behind home plate to get to your clubhouse. And we'll see what kind of reaction he gets as he takes the mound here in the bottom of the first inning. Two down, Ramirez at third base, and here's Jason Veritek. Veritek at 307, 17 homers, and 65 runs batted in. He's hit safely in a season best 12 straight games. During the 12 game hitting streak, hitting at 417. Red Sox doing very well against Redmond with the exception of Ramirez and Ortiz, 6 for 28. Jason Veritek is 5 for 14 against Redmond in his career. That includes a home run against Mark Redmond. Veritek ahead three and one. Back to back left hand is Zito last night. Completely different style. Zito with the great curveball. Redmond a bit different, mixing up his pitches. A strike to Veritek and a full count now. Mark Redmond last year, career high 14 victories in his first season with the Florida Marlins. Tied Brad Penny and Dontrell Willis for the team lead in wins. Veritek hits one high and deep to center field. Mark Ponce hitting back, and he'll get there to make the catch. Shy of the warning track to end the inning. Red Sox getting a run on the home run by Johnny Damon. And we will stay right here in Oakland as Derek Lowe will take the hill. We'll see what kind of reaction he gets here tonight. No, I think the I don't think the fans realize Derek Lowe's out there yet. They will soon. We'll step aside in the meantime. One nothing Red Sox. Back in Oakland, the Red Sox on top, one to nothing, thanks to a home run by Johnny Damon. And it's on to the last half of the first inning. Derek Lowe facing Mark Potze to begin the inning, the Oakland center fielder. Through into right field. Potsey aboard to begin things in the bottom of the first inning. 
Let's take a look at the rest of the Oakland A's starting lineup brought to you by Rico. Mark McLemore batting second at second base. Eric Chavez at third base. Scott Hatterberg at first. Rubio Durazo is the designated hitter. Eric Burns in right field. Damian Miller does the catching. Bobby Crosby, the rookie at shortstop, bats eight. And Nick Swisher, another rookie at left field, bats ninth. And you see the numbers for Derek Lowe, three games over 500, and that's because of a four-game winning streak that Lowe is on. Wins against Tampa Bay, Toronto, Detroit, and last time out against Anaheim. 1-0 this year against Oakland at Fenway, but he did give up five earned runs in six innings against the Athletics. Macklemore, the hitter, as he pulls the bat back out of the way. Bill Miller charging from third base. Michael Moore, 251 with a home run and 15 runs batted in. One attempt and he bunts it foul. Make it two and one. Now bunting for a base hit there is McLemore. He has a Bill Miller even with the bag but pulled way over towards shortstop. And McLemore trying to drop that ball right down the third base line. You can see how far Bill Miller is off that third base back. McLemore signing a one-year deal here with the A's on April 5th. He's placed on the DL, then had surgery to repair his right knee. Oakland was willing to wait for the surgery and the rehab process. He was activated on May 11th and has been with the A's ever since. Takes a 2-1 for a strike, and it's now 2-2. Two two. A disappointing crowd here tonight at the Coliseum. Pretty good crowd last night on Labor Day, but a uh, much smaller crowd here tonight. Missing away, and a full count down to McLemore. Next, they're entering a base hit to Mark Kotze to begin the eighth. I would say that uh, Katze will be off here on this 3-2 pitch against the sinker ball pitcher. Try to stay away from a double play. There he goes, and the pitch is a ball, ball four to McLemore. So a single and a walk for the A's right out of the gate. Red Sox defense is brought to you by Lexus and some fine defensive plays for the Red Sox last night. David Roberts uh, diving in the first inning last night to make a catch, which kind of led the way defensively for the Red Sox in that ball game. Of course, Manny's called catch in the eighth inning last night, which really got things hot here at the uh, Coliseum. And then Gabe Kapler also making a terrific jumping play as Roberts ran into him, and he was able to hold on to the baseball. So good defense all the way around for the Red Sox. Chavez swing at the first pitch. Looks it to right field. Kapler moving in to make the catch for the first out of the inning. So Chavez first pitch swinging, and he is retired. First out here in the bottom of the first inning. I'd say at second base, McLemore at first, and here comes Scott Hatterberg. Now batting, number 10, Scott Hatterberg. Oakland first, first baseman base. hitting at 307, 14 homers, and 76 runs batted in. Hatterberg is now hit safely in 13 of his last 15 games. And still the toughest to strike out in the American League. What a strange combination. You have the cleanup hitter in your lineup. The guy that's got 14 home runs in the season and the toughest guy in the American League to strike out. That's the very different. Yeah, that's, that certainly is different. Frustrating night for Ken Maka last night. And the Oakland A's really felt as if they were robbed on the call last night. It certainly would have changed the complexion of the game very late in the game. Two and one. The league leaders brought to you by Volvo, the official vehicle of the Boston Red Sox. 
And the category is toughest to strike out. Played appearances per strikeout. 14.2 for Hatterbury. It's Stein each year old from Maryland to Ottawa. it to left. Manny back there. Makes the catch for out number two. And Oakland had two on. Nobody out. They have two on with two down. Well, I'm not sure it's a good sign for Derek Lowe. He's got two outs in this inning after a run is at first and second, but both have been fly ball number outs. 44, Rubio Dorado, designated hitter. But he'll take outs any way he can get them, but I think that Derek would prefer to see some ground ball outs. So two down here is a Rubio Durazo, the designated hitter for the A's. 320, 21 home runs and 78 runs batted in. in the last 27 games, Durazo has been hot hitting at 382 for the A's. That's such great numbers against Derek Lowe, just one hit and eight tries. His last 19 in September after hitting better than 300 in the month of August. Chops it softly right side to Millar. He'll flip to the covering pitcher low, and Lowe gets out of the jam in the first. As the A strand two, he played one from Oakland, one nothing Boston. All right, Tom, thank you very much. Kevin Millar leading it off as we head to the second inning. The Red Sox featuring six, seven, and eight. One nothing lead here tonight for the Red Sox thanks to a leadoff home run by Johnny Damon in the first inning. Are off balance with that cut. Well, as a result of the Yankees victory, this is what it looks like right now. The Red Sox three games back in New York to begin the night. A wild card situation. The Red Sox with a four game lead over the Angels and Jerry is crossing out, out the Rangers right now. Well, I think Don, as we look at the base hit by Kevin Millar and maybe two. Headed for second base and will easily get there. The leadoff double to begin things in the second inning. I think uh, the teams right now, uh, you know, when you get eight games back and you got to jump over another club, uh, I think until the Rangers, and they are winning tonight, they're winning uh, big against Chicago, 10 to 3. Until they get to five, we're going to leave them off the list. Orlando, Anaheim tonight is hosting Toronto. And it's Bartolo Colon on the mound tonight for Anaheim. TBA for Toronto. We'll Trying to get word for you who is going for the Blue Jays. Orlando Cabrera batting with Millar at second base. Goes the opposite way and caught by Hatterberg. Dropped the ball going into the glove to make the transition. And Cabrera is retired on one pitch, softly lining out to Hatterberg at first. Yeah, Cabrera trying to move the ball Cabrera with the right side to advance a lot of third base, third but he hits a soft line drive that Hatterberg can get to, and then as Hatterberg was going to throw to second base, he just drops the ball. So it was uh, not a drop, just uh, on the transfer to the throwing hand. He could not control the baseball. So it's the out, and there you see the drop by Hatterberg. Malaya remains at second base. Here's Bill Miller. 286, 11 home runs and 52 runs batted in. It was one for five in the ball game last night with a double. Really has been hot over the last 25 games, hitting 365. And lifting his average some 25 points during that time. From 261 up to 286. A lot of movement late in the season with a lot of at bats. Looks like new batting gloves for Bill Miller. He's trying to get uh, a little dirt on him. Sometimes you get those new gloves, you don't have any pine tar on there, and they're a little bit slick. base and the count remains one and two to Miller. 
Dr. Bill Miller earlier today said he enjoyed his time out here in this area while a member of the San Francisco Giants. It was an outstanding place to live, although he said it was very expensive when he was out here. I guess this area is pretty expensive. It is. Yeah, it's one of the most expensive in the country. Play guys can afford to live right. out here. <laughs> well, no, it's Carl Powell. It's still one of two now to Bill Miller. Kappa waiting on deck. Red Sox batting here in the top half of the second inning. Three hits already off Mark Redmond and a run for the Red Sox. A home run by Johnny Damon. Two and two. And the Red Sox certainly playing better baseball overall, but uh, as we highlighted in the open tonight, they're certainly playing much better on the road now. After really what was kind of an inconsistent time for the Red Sox. Always seem to play much better at home than on the road, and they're spending much of the year under the 500 mark on the road, but now with the victory last night, up over 500 at 33 and 32. Red Sox making some additions, welcoming back Pokey Reese. Trot Nixon before the ball game, activating them both. Both available tonight, and uh, Terry Francona, pretty honest about it before the game, is not sure how much playing time they're going to get. Obviously, if there were more games going on at the minor league level, he would rather have had those guys head in that direction for a little while and get some more rehabbing done, but uh, the minor league seasons are over. One has popped up, foul outside of third. Chavez ranging to make the catch for out number two. Well, for the second consecutive year, the Red Sox will team up with the American Red Cross and Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center to host a blood drive this Thursday, September 11th at Fenway Park. The drive will run from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. in the 406 Club. Donors will receive a commemorative gift and be entertained by Red Sox personalities while they wait. Please join us September 11th in supporting this important effort to help save lives. So two down, and here comes Gabe Kapler. Kepler starting in right field tonight for the Red Sox, batting ninth in the order. He checks in, hitting at 272, five homers and 27 runs batted in. With uh, Trot Nixon and Pokey Reese taking live batting practice today against Scott Williamson. Trump was raving about uh, how Williamson looks as Kapler hits one deep and far to left field. It is crushed and it is gone. A two run home run for Gabe Kapler, his sixth of the year, and the Red Sox out to the 3 0 lead. Gabe Kapler in this, on his career now 5 for 7 against Redmond, and he hits his second home run. Well, Don, we mentioned home runs might be a factor. They have been a big factor here early in the ballgame. The solo home run by Damon. Kapler gets that inside fastball and shoots it right down the left field line. And the booze kind of rained down here early for Mark Redmond in the Oakland A's. Second time through now for Redmond as Johnny Damon stands in. And blast for Gabe Kapler. This is hit hard on one hop. To Macklemore at second base. He throws out Damon to end the inning. But a two run home run for Gabe Kapler through an inning and a half. Red Sox on top 3 0. Number 22. Well, a tough start to, for Mark Redmond to allow two home runs one to Johnny Damon and one to Gabe Kapler. You know, Don, I was talking, we talking between innings. And, you know, a lot of times we talk about Wakefield pitching between. Schilling and Martinez and I think it really doesn't matter you know but I, I don't this setup here where you have Zito last night with his kind of stuff with Redmond whose stuff's not as good it just doesn't seem to make sense to me it seems like that following night you get in here against another left hander that you're more comfortable against than you would be against Zito it seems to me like they should split those guys up Eric Burns leading it off here in the last half of the second and this one is rifled back through the infield in the center field 
Check in with Eric Freed. Eric? Well, Don, you and Jerry mentioned a couple of minutes ago about the return of Trot Nixon. He left the Red Sox after July 24th. That left quad injury was acting up again. After a long rehab, again, another rehab for him. He says he's ready to go. He's just willing to be a role player right now on a team that's playing very well. This team is playing great right now. And, uh, you know, with or without me, these guys are going to play great. And uh, I just want to be one of those kind of guys that just comes back in there and, and helps the team, you know, whenever Tino wants, Tino wants me to get out there and, and play in the field or, or pinch hit. Um, these guys, you know, Kapler, Kevin, uh, Dave Roberts, that have been put out there in right field. They deserve every right to play every day just as much as, you know, I would like to. Trot says it feels like an old tractor this year. He's had the quad problems twice and the back problems earlier in the season, but now he says he's starting to feel a little bit better. It's happening at a pretty good time, guys. All right, Eric, thank you very much. And I can tell you this, there's nothing worse than being hurt and not being able to participate, especially on a club that's going well. It's, you know, for especially for a guy like Nixon who's so competitive. And Miller, the hitter, and it's knocked down nicely by Bellhorn. He stays with it. Can he get Miller still? Yes, he can. A bang, bang play at first base, and a nice one by Mark Bellhorn to stick with it. Yeah, the question there was, you know, it's a great initial play by Bellhorn to knock it down, but was it going to roll far enough away for him where he would not be able to get Damian Miller? There's Bellhorn playing up the middle in that double play position, knocks it down. Now the ball rolls and he's going to chase it down. Can he get to it in time? He does. Makes a strong throw and just gets Damian Miller at first base. One down, Burns at second base, and here's Bobby Crosby. Cleared the punch at it and did. I just can't agree with that. You know, you got a man at second base in scoring position. I, I just don't understand it. We see more and got more guys doing that. Swing the bat and try to drive him in. Crosby leading in a lot of the rookie categories offensively. You see the numbers 18 homers, 53 runs batted in. And an outstanding first season for the Oakland shortstop. Burns at second base. Crosby swings and misses and strikes off. First strikeout for Derek Lowe tonight. And there's two down on the second inning. Now the curveball was a very good pitch for Derek Lowe in his last outing against Anaheim. And it's a very good curveball here to pick up uh, his first strike out of the night against Crosby. Crosby's going to have to somehow, you know, as he matures, cut down on his strikeouts. That's 113 for him now in the season. four with runners in scoring position tonight. Two down Burns at second base. Here's Nick Swisher. Chops it left side to third. Bill Miller hop in a fire on to first to retire the side. Burns is stranded at second base. We play two. Boston on top three nothing. Welcome back to Oakland. We have Ken Casey with us from the Dropkick Murphys. And uh, welcome to Oakland. What are you doing here, Ken? Uh, seeing a little baseball courtesy of Billy Bean. He's uh, invited us out and uh, our record company's out here. So a little business, a little pleasure playing some golf. And Pebble Beach. Pebble Beach, yeah. Not bad. It's going to eat me alive, they tell me. I don't know. <laughs> you won't be the first one. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Well, the Red Sox here on the nice start on top three to nothing as we head to the home half of the fourth inning. You guys have uh, put together a great song, and uh, I'm curious as to how it uh, started for you. I mean, we just kind of uh, debuted recently, but uh, where did it all begin? Jeff Oregon, head co uh, the sports writer for the Boston Herald, had uh, been talking with uh, Charles Steinberg about uh, the history of the song Tessie, which um, you know has a long history with the team, and they, they're looking for someone to remake it. And he thought we we might have. Uh, you know, a good, a good ability to do that since we, we tend to do that with a lot of like old traditional Irish songs and remake them and modernize them. So they asked us to do it, and uh, it was quite, quite an honor to be, you know, involved with anything with the Red Sox. And the 
guys did the video right there at Fenway Park. That had to be cool. I tell you, I didn't think I'd ever be uh, let on that field. It was quite, quite uh, 1986. They had one foot on the wall going over at the after Game 7 of the America League Series, and uh, my friend's father, who's a cop, caught us. And uh, but <laughs> so I got on legitimately after all that. And all the proceeds uh, from the uh, song go to the uh, Red Sox Foundation, right? Yeah, all the proceeds uh, from the band, we're donating um, all our proceeds, and our uh, record company's donating all their proceeds. So it could, I think they pressed 50,000 CDs, and so it would raise well over $100,000. Uh, um, yeah, $100,000 if they sell, uh, sell through all of them. So it's a good cause, and, you know, I, I just can't say enough for, for the the people of the Red Sox and, and all the hard work they do and, and for us it's just recording a couple of songs no big deal and you know it's it's a thrill for us. You know. We noticed in the video that uh, Colleen Riley who is a friend of ours and uh, sweeps the bases here at Fenway Park on a nightly basis as well as part of that video big part of that video. Yeah she's on the front cover big part of the video you need you know the first thing everyone would say is who's Tessie so we said we need a Tessie and who better to be Tessie than than Colleen in that old-fashioned baseball outfit and it just fits fits everything perfectly. Three two foul back by Durazo. Durazo leading it off to be followed by Eric Burns and Damian Miller in the inning. You said this is the first ballpark you've been to other than Fenway. Other than Fenway, yeah. I actually I shouldn't say that I went to uh, the old candlestick, um, but it wasn't a, obviously it wasn't a Red Sox game. So when Damon hit that home run, it, it was just I was like, is the game started yet? Where's the chair? It was, it was so surreal, but uh, it's not quite as intimate as Fenway. It's, it's a different animal out here, that's for sure. As we swing the two-two, fouling it outside of first base. So you're a big baseball fan? Huge baseball fan. I've been following, you know, the team since, God, since I can remember, you know, since I was five or six years old, you know, and Fisk and Freddie Lynn, and, you know, I just, uh, you know, to be sitting out here in, in Oakland watching a game is, is uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. I got my cousin down there with me, and it's nice. And so he lives out here, so he's, he comes to all the games. And, guys begin the dropkick Murphys how did you guys meet how'd you get started well we were all from you know grew up pretty much in the same area and uh, we started uh, in the basement of a barber shop in uh, on Hancock Street and Beale Street in Quincy and uh, it was about f four feet by eight feet I think and uh, so we never planned on getting out of there it was just kind of for a hobby and you know one thing led to another and I don't, I don't know what happened but here we are also staying alive as he carves it foul back to the backstop. Is it all the original members uh, of the No, group? we we, we took, I think we've, we're up to seven members now. We started as a four piece and a couple left. So I think throughout the years there's been a total of nine of us. And we, we've toured for like nine months a year over the past five or six years. And I, I wore down on some of the members and they just couldn't hack the road, you know. You know what it's like. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Two to Durazo, a nine pitcher bat. Now it'll be ten pitches, a full count to the leadoff hitter. Visiting with Ken Casey from the Dropkick Murphys. Let's take a look at uh, some numbers for Derek Wolf for three innings. And a tough start to that last outing tonight, much better. And the number of pitchers as a result, and much less, just 34 pitchers. Durazo stays alive, though. This will hurt the pitch count at bats like this. And that's why Don in the open uh, we showed you highlighted that last outing by Derek Lowe because I mean it was big trouble for him early in that game and that's when he really settled down. I think that defensive play got him going in the right direction and he was terrific after that. Never expected him to get to the eighth inning in that ball game. A very long at bat here. Derek Lowe matched up against Arubio Durazo. it to left field. Ramirez going back. It's going to be over his head and off the wall. Heading for two is Durazo. And he cruises into second base with a double. And Durazo wins that battle. A very good battle by Durazo. Makes Derek Lowe throw a lot of pitches. You know, we've seen Durazo in this series hit the ball hard a couple of times the opposite field. Last night, Manny was able to make a play on it, but tonight, this ball quickly shoots up over the head of Ramirez. That ball down and away. That's good hitting there by Durazo. Ramirez thinking he has a chance but turns quickly to play it off the funny car and uh, Durazo has the double. A runner in scoring position. The Oakland A's have had at least one base runner every inning so far. 
Razo stands at second base and brings up Eric Burns. Burns singling to center his first time up. And you guys did a uh, concert with the Bruins, did you not, after a game? Yeah, that was kind of the start of our foray into the whole uh, sports world. Uh, we played after a Vancouver Canucks Bruins game. And that was a great experience as well. And, you know, also grew up a big Bruins fan. And, uh, Play there with a Brian Ralston scored the game winner in overtime and then came up and played guitar with us afterwards. Just you know, how could it how could you really get any better than that that night? So uh, that was a, that was an awesome experience. A couple guys in the Red Sox have interest in the guitar. I know Bronson Arroyo and uh, Kevin Millar, quite a few guys. Yeah, Bronson can actually play. Yeah. I think some <laughs> others have interest, but I don't know if they can play. But. Broken oh. bad liner to left field for base hit for Burns. And on to third base goes Durazo. The runners at the corners. Second hit tonight for Eric Burns. Now, Burns now has five at bats against Derek Lowe and has four hits against him. That's in regular season play, of course. Five game hitting streak for Burns. Broken bat. But he'll take it. Yeah, we know some of the Red Sox players sang backup. Uh, can you be honest and tell us who can do Is there anybody that you could say? Uh, Oh jeez, uh, you put me on the spot there. No, they they all they all could sing. I I, I said it before. I, I was the most impressed with Johnny Damon because he had the least experience out of the guys that came over and the cameras and everybody was right in his face. And oh boy, I, I wouldn't want to be in that position. And you know, and I do this for a living. And, and uh, him, you know, just just walking over to do a favor for a local band, and next thing you know. You know, everyone's right in, right up in his face with the cameras and, and you know, but obviously, you know, you get you know, nerves of steel if you can do uh, what he does for a living. So he, he pulled it off and he had a great attitude. And of course, we turned him way down in the mix, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know that. I'll tell you who's the real talent in this organization. It's Dr. Charles Steinberg. He was, really? He, he didn't make it on... There's a sticker on the front cover that says featuring Johnny Damon, Brunson Arroyo, and Lenny Donato, and I think it should have said Dr. Charles Steinberg as well, but he didn't make the cover. I don't know why. He's a huge Beatles fan. Yeah, you know, he has a great voice. The 2-0 is hit hard on a hop to third. Miller to second for one on to first. The double play. Yeah. Well, the Red Sox will take that exchange as the run comes in from third base into Razo, the first Oakland run of the night. And a double play started by Bill Miller. What is Burns and uh, looks like Burns and Bellhorn got hooked up on this uh, double play. Of course, uh, Bill Miller will give up the run in this situation and get two outs. Now here comes Burns in a second base. He slides way out of the uh, way out of the base path. There's no way he could have kept contact with that second base bag. And then slightly after that, there was uh, I don't know if it was words exchanged with Burns and Bellhorn, but it looks like they got hooked up a little bit. Take one more look at this burn smiling in the dugout. You see where he goes now. He cannot touch second base from where he goes to get Bellhorn. Oh, and he uh, gives him a little elbow shot right to the midsection. So not only is he out of the baseline, he gives him a little elbow to boot. Right, though. I don't think he had any chance. No, he had no chance of tagging that back. Keep that one in mind uh, the rest of this series. Uh, that's one that uh, other players. Second baseman don't appreciate. And usually, pitches uh, will protect their infielders. So, we'll see how things go in the next couple of games. But keep your uh, remember that one. Did you have stood for that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I could have done. But uh, <laughs> two one to Crosby is the swing and a miss, and the count now two and two. Crosby struck out swinging in the second inning. 0 for 1 tonight. And have you guys toured outside the United States? Or are you guys just inside the United States for the most part? Oh, no. This year we've been mostly outside the United States. We just got back from Europe uh, last week, and I'm lucky I get home because I'd be up, you know, it's six hours later, and I'd be up with, on the phone with my wife making her tell me, you know, night. I'd usually call around 4 in the morning, so I'd try to time it for the ninth inning. And, and I'd be expecting her to keep me up to date on the pennant race. I think I'd be headed for a divorce if I didn't get home soon. She well, fires on to first base. Ken Casey, thank you very much for stopping by. And Thanks for having the me. Song, Tessie. Appreciate it. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. 3-1 Red Sox.
Red Sox have the three to one lead as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Well, the car is stolen every 26 seconds in this country, but the best way to get your car recovered if it's stolen is low jack. And now you can enter the win the, win the only stolen vehicle recovery system used by police in the low jack caught stealing sweepstakes. For details, visit Nesson.com. Think anybody steal that one done? Probably not. What you call it? A funny car? It's a funny car. Smiling. It's funny. Nick Swisher leading it off here in the last half of the fifth inning. He bounced out to third base his first time up. First round pick by the Oakland A's, 16th overall. Back in 2002 and already here in the major leagues. You know, we uh, every time we come here, we of course stay in San Francisco here at Derek Lowe's numbers. Uh, 61 pitches, 37 for strikes through the four innings. Pitching line brought to you by Nissan. And of course, you know, we have to run a car to get over here. It's much cheaper doing that way and instead of taking cabs. And you can't get a cab anyway from here back. So we got the family trucks to this time. As uh, we brought everybody out today. We had That's quite a load in that. Had. I didn't realize you could fit so many. <laughs> I didn't realize you could fit so many people in a in, in a minivan. It's amazing. What do we have today? Five, we six, a troopy. You, Eric Freed. Weird Actually, guy. That's one high in the air to left center field. Damon over. Uh, Johnny will make the catch for the first out of the inning. Trippiano was the navigator up front with you. Yeah, we had uh, who else was this? Peter? Peter Chase. Peter Chase from the Red Sox Public Relations Department and John oh, Martin. Yeah, weird guy. John, John Martin was a little yeah. journalist. But, I mean, you know, we're saving the company big, big time money. There's all kind of cab, you know, fares it would have been. We got the family truckster and here we come. Here's Mark Kotze with one down. One thing I noticed about those minivans, there is a lot of room in the front. You know, uh, like, you could put, like, a computer up there, anything you wanted. You on a dashboard. Too much extra space, I think, really. What are you going to do with that space? I don't know. I don't know why it's here like that, but it's weird. I'm kind of liking it. I... Yesterday, we had the parking brake on for the first half of the trip over. Yeah, I was wondering why the car stopped every time I took my foot off the gas. I'd say it's a one hopper backhanded nicely by Bellhorn and plants and throws two down. The batter, second baseman, Mark McLemore. Number two away, and here comes Mark McLemore. He walked in the first inning, lined out to third base. And a great catch by Bill Miller in the third inning. Grass at third base once again. McLemore lifts it foul down the left field line back and out of play, and it's nothing in two. To Trot Nixon and Pokey Reese being available. Have you heard much more about Ellis Burke? Sounds like he's still uh, yeah. make his way back. It's uh, I just don't see how he's going to be able to help the Red Sox. He's trying. I give him credit for that. He's doing everything he possibly can, but you know, it's uh, it's a tough spot for him. Once the knees start to go the way it has for him this year, uh, it's going to be awfully tough, I think, for him to continue on. Full count down to Macklemore. I feel like a couple times he was close and then he would run and try to do a little bit more and then the swelling would come right back again. Yeah, that, that's a problem. You know, when you get to that point physically where, you know, you get operated on, it's a successful operation, but yet everything you do, your knee swells, um, it's not a good thing. Is that pretty much what happened to you yeah. in the end? Yep, exactly. I could probably go out and play one game, but I wouldn't be able to play another one for about a week and a half. You know, so it doesn't work. <laughs> now, 
you know, Ellis is a little bit different story. I mean, he could probably DH, you know, uh, as a guy that's capable of DH, and so that, that gives him reason to want to maybe continue on. Uh, certainly wasn't the case with me. I was never going to be a DH, so once the knees go, you go. Bye-bye. So been around the club a great deal this season and uh, one of the best clubhouse guys you'll ever see. And as McLemore goes down to first base, the third walk of the night given up by Derek Lowe. Second time McLemore has walked. And the A's have a base runner with two down. Third baseman, Eric Chavez. Here comes Eric Chavez. Glide to right in the first. He walked in the third inning. One walk in eight of the last nine games. And now has a career high 83 walks on the season. That's uh, despite missing over a month of the season. He's on the DL with a broken bone in his right hand. There's 27 home runs on the season and has hit to 25 or more home runs for the fifth consecutive season. Way and low falls behind two and one. And the league leaders in on base percentage. Evan Mora, the Nichiro and Posada. And then the Chavez and Ramirez. A lot of walks for Chavez. A strike and it's two and two. We will see Ichiro in the next series. Red Sox after the ball game tomorrow night. Be traveling to Seattle. Open up a four game series against the Mariners. The second visit of the season for the Red Sox to Seattle. Opposite field to left for Ramirez started in now goes back and makes the catch that one carried a lot more than I think Manny thought and he's able to make the catch on the warning track for the out we played five from Oakland Austin on top three to one under the top half of the sixth inning the Red Sox on top three to one David Ortiz Jason Veritek and Kevin Millar expected in the sixth inning. Now you've got to tip your cap to uh, Mark Redmond in this game. He has really settled down. It looked like it might be a short night for him in the first couple of innings. But he's pitched very well since that time. And he's up to 81 pitches in his outing. Home run for Damon in the first. Solo shot that a two run home run by Gabe Kapler in the second inning. Red Sox have not scored since. He's single run in the bottom of the fourth inning. And then his handle David Ortiz tonight. Ortiz is grounded out to second base and struck out swinging. to David Ortiz. Well, Red Sox a season high 28 games over 500. This time the Red Sox were 28 games over 500 was the close of the 2003 season. They were 95 and 67. time lately for Terry Francona this team has been rolling and certainly the great homestand which the Red Sox won nine out of ten it's 
Ortiz with a swing and a miss. Redman really keeping him off balance. Here's strikeout number three for Mark Redman. You know how he's been getting him out? He's been getting on with changeups, which is unusual. You know, lefty to lefty, okay. but he's been working the changeup down and in on David Ortiz. Struck him out twice tonight in the ground ball of second base. Ortiz now only one for 13 in his career against Redman. One down, and it brings up Jason Veritek. He's 0 for 2 so far tonight. Veritek flying out to center field and grounding the shortstop. Veritek laces one to left center field. That will get down and one hop the wall. Fisher plays the care of Veritek headed to second base easily in with a one out double. And Jason now with a 13 game hitting streak. And he continues to pound the ball against left handed pitching. Veritek now coming into the game at 361 against lefties. One for three in this game tonight. One bounce against the Comcast sign and Veritek in a second base. Second scoring position with one down, and here's Kevin Millar, who has been two for two tonight against Redman. Millar with a double in the second inning, he would come around to score on the two run home run by Gabe Kapler. And a single to left field in the fourth, so two for two tonight for Millar. And for a strike, team in the count of one and one. Straight games coming into tonight's action. We've been uh, pretty streaky this year. Hot then cold and hot again. And lately has been more consistent getting those power numbers up. Are now with 14 homers and 61 runs batted in on the season. In. Third time Millar's been on base tonight. And the first walk given up by Mark Redman. Now each time the Red Sox win at Fenway Park, Hood donates $1,500 to the Hood Home Team Advantage Charity Program. The program benefits children hospitals throughout New England. It's another reason you can feel good about Hood. Jason Veritek at second, Millar at first. Orlando. Dennis Eckersley in town. Uh, so this is really where it all happened uh, for Dennis Eckersley becoming a closer out here with the Oakland Athletics under Tony LaRusso and of course uh, on his way to the Hall of Fame uh, because of that. This is really where he considers you know his baseball career which led him to the, the Hall of Fame here in Oakland. North side Ray Fossey. And Greenwald. The Oakland Telecasters. Two on one away. Cabrera is 0 for 2 tonight. He's lined out to first base. Fly to right. Towards left center field, in for a base hit. Veritek being waved around. He will score. He's going to try and score Millar all the way from first. The throw from short left will be cut off. Two runs in. The Red Sox lead it five to one. Cabrera with a two-run double, and the Red Sox opening up the lead. 
Now Cabrera gets the change up from Redmond and again this pitch not bad it's down and it's on the outside part of the plate but Cabrera finds that gap in left center field and Dale Swain keeps that left arm moving as Mala comes around third base and they have no chance at all of getting him a short hop to the cutoff man and the ball was eventually cut off. Cabrera driving in a pair. RBI is 18 and 19 in a Red Sox uniform. And the Red Sox on top five to one. Glenn Miller 0 for two tonight. He's fouled out and grounded out. Tonight's attendance 29,689. Again, 29,689. Game two of this three game series between the Red Sox and the A's. Inside and Miller ahead, 2 and 0. in there for a strike to Miller. Oakland with action in the bullpen. Justin Dukesher from the Red Sox farm hand up in the bullpen. Red Sox have seen quite a bit of him uh, in those games back at Fenway Park. The two series played in Boston. They're bluffing as if he's going to steal third as Miller takes strike two. Two and two. Sometimes that's a distraction to the hitter at the plate. You know that guy at second base is jumping around and Faking like he's going to steal, and of course, your concentration as a hit of some time is broken by that. Nine to left, Swisher, and his tracks out there in left field makes the catch. And there's two outs in the inning. Cabrera back to the bag at second. Kenny Maka making his way out of the dugout. Uh, Kaplan's had great success in a home run tonight against Redmond, and looks like that's going to be the night. Redmond reaching the 100 pitch mark. One of a tough start to tonight. He settled down there for a bit, but gives up two runs here in the sixth inning. And it'll be chased from the game with the Red Sox on top, five to one. Step aside and come back from Oakland after this. Don Orsillo and Jerry Remy along with Eric Freed back at Networks Associates Coliseum in Oakland. This game summary is brought to you by a local Lincoln Mercury dealers. Johnny Damon after missing four games steps in and homers for the Red Sox in the first. Then Kapler is a two-run shot in the second. So the offense very good. So has been the defense tonight. Orlando Cabrero with an outstanding play and then a line drive off the bat of McLemore is feared at third base nicely by Bill Miller. And the Red Sox enjoying now a 5-1 lead over the Oakland A's. It chases Mark Redman from the game after five and two-thirds. He's still responsible for Cabrera at second base. And here is Justin Dukesher. Had a pretty good season. Uh, five and five. A lot of decisions uh, for a guy out of the bullpen. 42 appearances out of the bullpen. And uh, he's faced the Red Sox four times this season. He's given up a couple of earned runs in eight innings. Right fielder. So two down in the inning, two runs in. Orlando Cabrera at second base. And here's Gabe Kapler who hit a two-run home run in the second inning and then fly to the warning track in the fifth inning. I'm still in amazement that ball got to the warning track. He just kind of flicked his bat at it and it got all the way almost to the wall. I would certainly see this ballpark playing differently in these warm conditions that we have the last couple of nights. for Kapler in the count one and one. Justin Dukesher, 26 years of age. Born in Aberdeen, South Dakota. He resides in Colleyville, Texas. He was acquired by Oakland from the Texas Rangers for Luis Vizcaino in 2002. Kapler's guying that foul down the right field line and it's one and two. And that's probably his best pitch right there too. Pretty good curveball from Dukesher. 
Originally a Red Sox eighth round pick. In June of 2001 was traded away to the Texas Rangers for Doug Marabelli. June 12th of 2002. And went from Texas to Oakland uh, March 18th. This is lined in the center field a base hit. Cabrera is going to try and score. It gets away from Conte and Cabrera will easily score. The throw to second base and Capra will be out there. But the run will count as Cabrera gets in with the sixth Boston run and the Red Sox lead it six to one. Back in Oakland with the Red Sox on top six to one and Gabe Kapler banging in an additional run. He'll drive in Cabrera with this base hit. The ball bounces away from Kotze there. Maybe some of that bad turf out there having effect, but Kotze pounces on it, throws to second, gets Kapler, but certainly that run scoring. Gabe having a very good night for the Red Sox. On to the last half of the sixth inning. Scott Hatterberg, Rubio DeRazzo, and Eric Burns featured in the inning. Hatterberg goal for two in the game tonight. He's flying out to left field and grounded out to first base. Eric Lowe has thrown 80 pitches. So he works here in the last half of the sixth inning. Player profile is brought to you by Sovereign Bank, the official bank of the Red Sox cable network. 51 wins for Derek Lowe over the last three seasons. Tied for first with Mark Mulder. Pretty amazing. As this is lifted into shallow left center, falling fast and in for a hit. Newman plays it on a hop, and Hatterberg is aboard to begin things here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Derek Lowe certainly needs good defense behind him, and he has had it tonight. Mark Bellhorn first diving to knock the ball down, eventually getting the out at first base on a very close play. Cabrera on a ball up the middle. Goes in it was slide to make this play. And gets Damian Miller at first base. Billy Miller. Line shot takes extra bases away from Mark McLemore down at third base. And the last one was the double play, which I was a little late getting to. Rubio Durazo, the hitter. And he hit a double off Derek Lowe back in the fourth inning. One for two tonight. See that in, the, in this business? Uh, it's, we call it my bad. The video was there to support it, and I was late to the, to the party. Punch. Yeah, a little late getting to the double play. Third base is Bill Miller. He's standing over by shortstop. Uh, Cabrera very close to the bag. It's second. A little bit shipped on here for Durazo. He's now ahead of Derek Lowe, three and zero. Oh. Lowe has walked three tonight, walking Mark McLemore twice and Eric Chavez once. Strike down, it's three and one. Lazo thought he had ball four. in an outing. It was back on June 17th in Colorado. It was a victory. Red Sox winning 11 to nothing. As this one car fouled down the right field line back and out of play. The most walks Derek Lowe has given up in any outing was five walks. Did that against Kansas City back on May 9th. Hatterberg 
at first base. Again, the 3 2. Razo lifts it in the air to left center field. And Ramirez. A couple of steps to his left at the end, but he makes the catch. And Hatterberg back to the bag at first. Kind of a long wait there for Derek Lowe in the top half of this inning. An 18-minute wait as the Red Sox came up with three additional runs. A nice battle back there by Lowe, too. Fell behind 3-0. Got a questionable call on the 3-0 to make it 3-1. And then eventually gets the out against Durazzo. So one down. Hatterberg still at first. And here's Eric Burns. And there's a couple of singles tonight off Derek Lowe. with a career high 19 home runs this season for the A's. Hatterberg with a short lead at first base held on by Millar. And a tapper back to low. He'll go to second for one. Cabrera, a nice play, fires to first. In and out of the glove of Millar. And Burns with great speed anyway down that line at first. It's a heck of a play by Cabrera. Not a good throw by Derek Lowe. It's going to be behind. You know, you hope to be able to lead the shortstop across the bag. But this throw from Lowe is going to be to the shortstop side of the bag. Cabrera has to reach back. And there's little room, a little margin for error when you have a guy like Burns getting down the line. See, Cabrera hopes that's right over the bag so it carries his momentum across. And that's the only chance they would have had of getting Burns uh, in a double play. There's Damian Miller. This one gets away from Veritek back to the backstop, and Burns will easily grab second base. I'd say that uh, Derek just held on to this a little too long, uh, Don. That's my analysis of that pitch. <laughs> It's away from Veritek, and of course, Burns moves in the scoring position. Really charged low with a wild pitch. That was almost like his throw to second base. Yes, very similar. So two down, Burns in scoring position. And the 1 0 to Miller in there for a strike, 1 and 1. Damian Miller has grounded out to second base. Last time up, grounding into a 5 4 3 double play, 0 for 2 tonight. With some stirring going on in the Red Sox bullpen, and we may have our first action of the night. And we will. Mike Myers just getting up in the Red Sox bullpen. Seven pitches in his outing here tonight. Threw five and two thirds innings. Last time out, Derek threw 115 pitches against the Anaheim Angels in the 4 3 victory. To third base, Miller with a long throw. He gets there in time to retire Damian Miller. And the A's are gone in the sixth. We played six. Boston on top, six to one. exacting standards for the Ford fans of the game but sometimes you just go with the people with the blue and red hair the cape and the pajama bottoms like Daniel and Victoria have done here today Daniel's originally from New Hampshire where do you guys live now uh, Vacaville California where is that I've never heard of Vacaville it's about an hour and 30 minutes north of here down 80 All right, but no matter how far away you are from New England you have remained a Red Sox fan yeah definitely a Red Sox fan for life I believe I believe red you converted Victoria because she knew nothing about baseball yeah, that's right. She's she's diehard Red Sox fan now. And she's such a fan. Hold up what you got here. It's Wally. It's Wally. That's right. So we have a new Red Sox fan and fans out in Vacaville. Daniel and Victoria are Ford fans of the games. Guys. All right, Eric. Thank you very much. Nice hair. 
happens by the get up from head to toe. That Wally looks like he's on steroids. That's a big Wally. <laughs> Johnny Damon leads it off here as we head to the top half of the seventh inning. I take him for a test, Eric. Johnny Damon with a home run in the first inning, a solo shot. Since then, a ground out and a fly out. Right back at Dutcher. He's able to snare it. Throws out Johnny Damon for the first out of the seventh inning. So one down, and it'll bring up Mark Bellhorn. Bellhorn with a single his last time up, one for three tonight. Dutcher came into the game last inning. Taking over for Mark Redmond, who ended up going five and two thirds tonight. Redmond gave up eight hits, six runs, and walked one and struck out three, and is on the hook. Redmond coming into tonight's action with a record of 10 and 10. Second season with the Oakland A's. Last year got in just four games, spending the bulk of the year Triple A Sacramento. And a great season as a starter for Sacramento. It was 14 and two at Triple A, and then got called up at the end of the year. That foul back and out of play as Damian Miller gives it a look, but well back into the seats. Hey, one thing this uh, warm weather has brought into just a gorgeous view of. Uh, San Francisco as you drive over the Bay Bridge you know there's no fog hanging over the city and really get a beautiful look at the city itself and Alcatraz Alcatraz looks closer to me than I thought it would be I mean I guess why don't you try to swim it down tomorrow <laughs> why don't you give it a crack I, because there's shark problems and everything else in between Maybe that's the currents the currents is what get you too much yeah and I, if I was you tomorrow spend the day yeah, just give it a crack We'll follow you. Make sure everything's okay. <laughs> Bellhorn strikes out two down. Yeah, Duke continues to uh, do very well against the Red Sox. He's been in this role a couple of times this year against Without Boston. Bender, has quieted the Red Sox bats. A fastball inside that time to pick up the strikeout against Bellhorn. But you're right. It doesn't look that far, does it? No, I thought it was much further away. Two down for Manny Ramirez. He made a double in the first inning. He's one for three tonight. The Red Sox now in the season series against the A's have outscored them 67 to 37. This is hit hard on the ground to the backhand of Bobby Crosby. And the throw dug out at first by Hatterberg. Red Sox down in order. Seventh inning stretch time from Oakland. Red Sox on top six to one. Back in Oakland. The Red Sox on top six to one as we head to the last half of the seventh inning. And look at Derek Lowe's numbers. He's averaged 106 pitches over his last four outings. He's thrown 98 pitches tonight. And he's back out there for the bottom of the seventh inning. Just the one run over six innings. One scored on a double play ball. Which uh, Rubio Durazo scored from third base. As Damian Miller grounded into the 5-4-3 double play back in the fourth inning. Bobby Crosby leads it off here in the last of the seventh. He is struck out and grounded out to third base. Embry is throwing in the bullpen for the Red Sox, so we'll see what happens with these first two hitters uh, in this inning. Uh, you got Kotze, the leadoff man, lefty McLemore switched in Chavez, so that's uh, that's why you see Embry up at this point. Walk 
steps down to first base. The fourth walk given up by Derek Lowe. And it begins things here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Lamar coming in from first. Cabrera from shortstop. Nick Swisher. Well, the fourth walk, and here comes Nick Swisher. The number nine hitter for the A's is off for two tonight. He's grounded out to third base and flied out to center field. Swisher, who so far in the major leagues is three for ten. And here comes Dave Wallace. Red Sox trying to grab some time here for Alan Embry to warm up. Well, I think uh, Wallace here just trying to uh, change this routine a little bit for Derek Lowe. He has not even been close so far in this inning. Well, don't miss the Boston Globe's NFL preview section. You'll find an in-depth feature on Tom Brady, plus scouting reports on all NFL teams. Get ready for kickoff. Pick up the Boston Globe this Thursday. What a great time of year. you got tennis races and baseball. you got football starting up, college football starting. Derek Lowe with the leadoff walk of Bobby Crosby trying to settle down. He's falling behind Nick Swisher, 1 0. Oh. And the strike after the visit with Dave Wallace. It evens the count now 1 and 1. Nick Swisher got his first major league hit off Ted Lilly in the fourth inning for his first major league hit. His first major league home run off Sean Douglas. Swisher's dad, Steve Swisher, had over 500 games in the major leagues with the Cubs, the Cardinals, and the Padres. Foul back to the backstop. Well, you were an announcer on a team that he managed, right? Yeah, his dad was a manager of uh, the Double A Mets in Binghamton, New York, Steve Swisher. And uh, ended up being the bullpen coach for the New York Mets for a few years. I remember when he brought Nick to the ballpark a few times, and that was what, 1993 would have been a manager. The Binghamton Mets. Uh, he has grown up in a very big way. First round draft choice by the A's. And one of the names that you become familiar with in uh, the book Moneyball, which uh, that year Oakland making him their first round draft choice. I have not read that book. Really? Right. Either was Ken Maka, manager of the Oakland A's, oddly. This is lined off the glove at first to Bellhorn and ducking back to the bag at first was Crosby so they'll just throw to second base for the out there. Actually it looked like maybe they could have had a double play if 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 Bellhorn throws the first base they may have the force and then they just tag uh, the runner. Line shot ball hit very hard and it was knocked down by Kevin Millar fortunately rolled out to Bellhorn now now watch the base run of Crosby he certainly doesn't want to be double up he thinks Millar caught that ball so he's betting back to first base Bellhorn just going to take that force at second and that's going to be the night for Derek Lowe well Derek Lowe will leave after 106 pitches with one out here in the last half of the seventh inning. Just the one run so far tonight. Red Sox on top 6-1. 
Six to one. Red Sox on top with one away here in the seventh inning. Alan Embry into the game. Second appearance of this series. The third of an inning last night for the Red Sox. His 61st overall on the season. Embry for the longest time was in the top ten in the games in the American League. Uh, he handled stretch where he really didn't get into a lot of games. But uh, now uh, getting a little bit more work. Had a period of the dead arm and uh, did not pitch very much. Derek Lowe, six and a third, mm -hmm. five hits. Only the one earned run to this point. Four walks and one strikeout for Lowe. 107 total pitches. Derek still responsible for Nick Swisher, who is on first base being held on by Millar. As Mark Kotze stands in. One for three tonight. Kotze with a single back in the first. Dropped outside of first and foul. Lamar gives chase. <laughs> Double barreled action in the Red Sox bullpen. Mike Timlin and Mike Myers. Myers had been up earlier and he's back up again. It's a confusing sign behind them, isn't it? I didn't see it. Action cable 636. Uh, what is it? Six or is it 36? Maybe it's both. Strike and it's nothing in two to Katze. Action. I mean, where do you turn? Six. Do you turn to 36 or do you turn to six? Good point. I have no idea. <laughs> so, table six, 36. I don't know. Now they tell us it's 36 on broadcast and six on cable, so you figure it out. Swing and a miss, and Katze strikes out. So Alan Embry makes quick work of the first batter that he faces. And there's two down here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Embry goes to the breaking ball uh, to pick up the strikeout against Katze. Looks like McLemore is being called back, and a right-handed hitter will be sent up to the plate. Bobby Kielty. Bobby Kielty. That's why we have Nesson. I mean, there's no confusion there with Nesson. It's not, you know, you've got to go to 36. It's, it's, it's you just gotta, Nesson. You go to Nesson. Bobby Keelty, pitch hitting for Mark McLemore, who walked twice tonight and lined out. Guilty at 210, seven home runs. Tried to hold up, but cannot. He offers it the first pitch from Alan Embry. Bobby Keelty, of course, a switch hitter and a higher average from the right side of the plate and more home runs. He's got seven total on the season. Six is a right-handed hitter. He's limited time lately. It's July 19th. He's played in 24 games and is hitting at 159 during that time. So bouncing in. To even the count of one and one to kill two. He was seven home runs this season. Six of the seven home runs have come off left-handed pitchers. As he faces the lefty Alan Embry here with two down in the last half of the seventh inning. On the ground, Miller to his left will go to second base for the force out of Nick Swisher to end the inning. We played seven from Oakland. Boston on top, six to one. Red Sox on top six to one as we get ready for the top of the eight. Let's take a look at what's on tap for the Red Sox brought to you by Heineken. One game left in this three game series against the A's. We'll have it for you here tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Then it is off to Seattle to take on the Mariners. The first game on Thursday night right here on Nesson. Friday night UPN 38 in Boston. Nesson outside of Boston and Saturday and Sunday a night game on Saturday and the late afternoon game on Sunday as the Red Sox wrap up their West Coast swing. New second baseman is Esteban Herman takes over at second as David Ortiz leads it off here in the top of the eighth. Ortiz 0 for 3 tonight, grounding out in the first inning and striking out twice. Justin Dukcher has been in there since the sixth inning. He enjoyed a 1-2-3 seventh. 
Rose back out there for the eighth. Speed and lifted in the air to right center field. Ponce, the center fielder there for out number one. Well, we should mention, Don, that we have not seen Jermaine die in this series. He has not played very much recently. He's had a sprained left thumb. He did that back on August 6th in Minnesota, and uh, since that point, has not really played a lot of baseball mm -hmm. for the uh, Oakland A's. Yes, Jason Baratek. Certainly a big part of the middle of the Oakland A's order, but uh, not been able to play in the series so far. As Veritek stands in. Plus Oakland uh, with the lead in the West, but they looked on the coast tonight, and Anaheim is uh, leading their game in the seventh against Toronto 5-2. to two. With a two-and-a-half game lead. Look at the standings at the moment. The Rangers are closer to the top of their division than they are in the wild card picture at the moment. Well, Duke sure has seen a lot of action against the Red Sox this season, and the first six games played at Fenway Park. It's pretty good numbers. Down the third baseline, Chavez, as well as the catcher Miller, it'll be Damian Miller. He makes the catch for out number two, two down. And some of the fans who were bothering low before the game. And the still wrapping things up here tonight and walking by the same fans. Don't have too much to say here at the end. Center field for Kevin Millar. Back at the wall, and it is gone. Off the top of the wall and out of the yard. Kevin Millar with his 15th home run of the season, and the Red Sox lead it 7 to 1. Now well, the Red Sox with three home runs in this game. Damon and then Kapler and now later on in the eighth inning Kevin Millar. Millar with three hits in the ball game. Three for three. A double, a single and now the home run on a fastball. That is really his zone there. Middle in. Just about belt high and it hits right off the top of the 362 right in that area and bounces out. The sixth straight game that Millar has had an RBI. His 15th home run of the season. The Red Sox on top, seven to one. Looks like a string of six in a row retired by Justin Dukesher. they sending it to second base. Her mom just into the game throws him out, and that ends the top of the eighth. Boston on top now, seven to one. in Oakland with the Red Sox on top seven to one as we head here to the last half of the eighth inning some defensive changes for the Red Sox Doug Mankiewicz takes over at first base for Kevin Millar and the Red Sox will use their third pitcher of the night Mike Myers into the game 13th appearance in a Red Sox uniform is 63rd overall he's among the leaders in the league in appearances his last outing was Saturday against the Rangers a third of an inning three lefties due up Chavez had a and Durazo and Myers gets the call here in the eighth Chavez 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. As he grounds one a deep third. Bill Miller stands up, spins, and fires to first in time to get Chavez. Another outstanding play turned in by Bill Miller. I'll tell you what, he is playing as good at third base as you can possibly play. I mean, he's making all the plays. Going to his left, going to his right, second time tonight. The first was a line drive to his right, that time on the ground. Quickly back to his feet and throws out Chavez. I think Chavez thought he had a base hit for sure. He wasn't going hard out of the box, and he realized that Miller made the play and then hustled down the line, but it's too late. So one down for Scott Hatterberg. Hatterberg with a single his last time up. You know, we didn't have a chance to get to it because uh, Chavez swung at the first pitch, but 
Here's a guy that all through his career has had a lot of trouble against lefties, but this year he's way over 300 against left-handers. I wonder what he's doing differently it's this a, year. It's amazing how he can turn it around like that in just one year. I mean, he was almost an automatic, I shouldn't say automatic out, but I mean, his average was always very, very low against lefties. Sometimes there's a slight adjustment of your feet, maybe open up a little more, you see the ball better. Softly back to Myers. They're going to knock it down, then throw out Hatterberg. Two down. Let's check in with Eric Freed. Eric? Well, flawless play on the infield so far this inning. They could get a little better, the Red Sox, defensively here because Pokey Reese is wet, ready, willing, and now able to help his teammates. He was activated today. He was on the disabled list since July 19th. Okay. One of the better defensive infielders in the okay. American League is ready to try yeah. and help this team. It means a whole lot to me. I get a chance to go out and help this team win. You know, the, our goal is to get to the World Series and, you know, to win. So, I, and I want to, you know, now that I'm back healthy, I, I'm glad I can be a part of that. Now you could see Pokey as kind of a defensive stopper. You got Minkiewicz at first in the late innings. Maybe Pokey Reese comes in at second base for Mark Bellhorn. You know what Cabrera can do at short, and we all have seen what Bill Miller can do at third. So that's a pretty good defensive infield late in the game that Terry Francona has at his disposal. Guys. Right, thank you very much, Eric. You know, you, you start thinking about, uh, Don, all the players that have come back and how many guys are on the roster now, and uh, if the Red Sox get to postseason, there are going to be some difficult, difficult choices for that staff to make. They're going to be some people going to be upset. Very different this year as it is one hop to Miller to his left. He fires to first. It's a 1 2 3 inning for Mike Myers. Nicely done. We head for the ninth. The Red Sox on top 7 to 1. It's on to the top half of the ninth Lee inning. Ball. And a new pitcher on for the A's, Justin Lear. Now Bill Miller will be the first batter that he faces, and Justin Lear should remembers uh, Bill Miller because Miller had a walk-off home run against him back in a series at Fenway Park earlier. This is Manny, but... Uh... Leading it off here and slicing one foul off to the left. And Justin Lear just called up today his second uh, time up with the A's this season. Worked in 22 games prior to uh, being sent back to the minor leagues at Sacramento. He was in 32 games and had a four and two record. Remember that home run, Don? No. I'm gonna walk off. Where did it go? It's coming. Left or right? Do you remember? I honestly don't really remember. No, it's actually, it was the ball that uh, scored Johnny Damon all the way from first base in the gap. Ah, that I do remember, yes. 1-1 one, one is lifted in the air to shallow left. And Nick Swisher coming in. Make the catch for the first out of the inning. Thus, I know back home you'd be anxiously awaiting this flashback, and here it is on July 8th. Bill Miller into the gap. Okay. Damon round second. He's waved on by Dale Swaim. And, of course, the Red Sox have that, uh, that victory at Fenway Park. One of those ones where you can all celebrate around home plate. And Bill Miller retired for the first out of this inning. Bill does not have a hit tonight, but he has certainly contributed defensively for the Red Sox. And an outstanding night at third base. Brooks Robinson kind of night down there at third base tonight, Don. Kapler, the hitter, the hits tonight. Gabe's had a fine evening at the plate. And a two-run home run in the second inning, his sixth home run of the year. And a single to drive in a run in the sixth inning. Didn't he, Brooks Robinson? He was an announcer at one time, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, sure. Played, played against Brooks. Terrific guy. Great one guy. One of the greatest guys you ever want to meet. Pretty good player, too, you know. Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah, he went bad with the glove. On a couple of gold gloves. Kapler goes the opposite way to right field. A fair ball as it heads for the corner of the 330 marker. And as Kapler headed to second base with a double. Third hit of the night for Gabe Kapler. And 
And this game summary is brought to you by Dunkin Donuts. The Red Sox tonight with a great night from Gabe Kapler gets his third hit. Kevin Millar also with three hits tonight, including a home run in the ball game. The Red Sox had a home run from Johnny Damon in the first, and Kapler with a two-run shot in the second inning. And then in the Red Sox starting nine, with the exception of Ortiz and Miller without hits. Now Trot Nixon hitting and getting a nice standing ovation from Red Sox fans here at the, the Coliseum. For the return once again for Trot Nixon. Nixon in short time this season at 273, three homers and 13 runs batted in. Batting practice before the game faced live pitching. And as he faced Scott Williamson, he and Pokey Reese both, and both activated before the ball game tonight. And this is sort of the way we Terry Franco would like to get him reacclimated to playing once again. Have the chance to play in just one rehab game for the Pawtucket Red Sox before their season came to an end. They'll put Nixon in the outfield. I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe Roberts goes in uh, the center field defensively. We'll see how Francona plays it. Nixon hitting for Johnny Damon, who had been one for four tonight with a home run. Go up top that time. Swing and a miss. One and two. Lear, the third Oakland pitcher of the night. Dutcher went two and a third innings, giving up two hits and one run. He gave up the home run to Kevin Millar last inning. He didn't walk anybody, and he struck out one. The Oakland pitcher on the hook is their starter, Mark Redmond. He gave up six runs. Frustrating season for Trot Nixon, spending the bulk of the year on the DL. Up there at second base with one out. Only two miles per hour missing from Lear, and it's two and two. Grounds it down the first base line, bobbled by Hatterberg. You'll need the pitcher, and Lear is there for the out. And with the ground ball to the right side, Kapler moves on to third base with two down. You know, Don, you're looking at dugout. I'll tell you what, the Red Sox lead the league in uh, different types of haircuts. Yes, they do. <laughs> All led by Johnny Damon. They have Trot Nixon with the Mohawk. And did you get a look at Bronson Arroyo today? Yes, I did. That was alarming. Oh, my goodness. Look There's at this. Bronson, the new do. I like it. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it takes guts. It does, yes. But I think uh, Bronson thinks it looks good. Well, I think he's mistaken. He was quite honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my analyzing. A lot of work goes into that. Yeah, it just doesn't happen. Well, did you see the back? 
the, yes, the back it, it, all tied up and ready yeah, to and it's like it's uh, it's quite the look. Wouldn't that like wouldn't that be like getting a facelift where you're really pulling your, like your forehead tight with all that stuff going in the back? It's just like getting a facelift. I should do that maybe. <laughs> Get rid of the wrinkles on my forehead. <laughs> Bellhorn shoots it down the left field line towards the pole in the corner, but a foul ball kept bending away, and Bellhorn will have to come on back. And a souvenir for that youngster, hand hurting a little bit. Still hurts, but he's got the baseball. That's the important thing. Now it's really hurting. <laughs> one two to Belmore. He's in there for strike three, and the Red Sox are retired in the top of the ninth. End of the last of the night, seven to one Boston. Back in Oakland, seven to one Red Sox on top of a host of defensive changes for the Red Sox. Dave Roberts comes into the game in center field. Adam Heisdu, the new left fielder for the Red Sox. And the Red Sox will use their fourth pitcher of the night, Curtis Laskanek. 21st appearance for Laskanek, his 22nd in a Red Sox uniform, his first since Saturday against Texas when he walked, uh, did the third of an inning against the Rangers. Laskanek taking over for Mike Myers, who pitched a perfect eighth inning, getting three ground ball outs. Scanic trying to finish things off here tonight for the Red Sox. The end of this series, any team with a better home record than the Red Sox was the Oakland A's. But the Red Sox are able to hold on here in the ninth inning. The A's would have lost three of their last five home series. Oakland had been hot. It's that final game of the road trip against the Blue Jays in tough fashion when they committed five errors. And sending it to shortstop Cabrera on the run in the dirt. Nicely dug out by Mankiewicz at first for the first out of the inning. Now you see Cabrera pointing to Mankiewicz. Mankiewicz has saved him a number of times uh, since they've been in a Red Sox uniform. A lot of one bounces, uh, one hop to first base, and Mankiewicz picking it clean. Knows he has to rush. He's got Burns going down the line. Nice backhanded play by Minkiewicz. Oakland's got to be starting to wonder, you know, Don. I mean, they have not had success at all this year against the Red Sox. Whether it be at Fenway or here at the Coliseum. This will be seven wins and eight tries for the Red Sox against the A's this season. Miller's 0 for 3 tonight. We touched on it last inning about uh, the call ups here for the Red Sox, where there really haven't been any. Just a couple, and really the majority of it is just uh, activating a lot of the injured players. And the difference there is you're bringing in a lot of major league caliber guys, major leaguers, not uh, guys that are untested or inexperienced. Uh, we're getting a lot of proven major leaguers back here at the end of the year. A lot of depth, as you can see on the scorecards uh, for both teams, but especially on that the Red Sox side here. They just have a bunch of guys. And a lot of those guys in the game right now. To the Miller, and he strikes out. Two down in the ninth. Scanick with a very good breaking ball. You know, he's got a fastball that's lively. There's that slider that he throws is really his out pitch. Scanick, of course, with uh, closer experience in the past. So two down, and it brings up Bobby Crosby. Roll for two of the walk tonight. Sox have one game left here in Oakland and uh, the best pitching matchup of the series here tomorrow night. Pedro Martinez 15 and 5 matched up against Tim Hudson 11 and 4. Hudson with a nifty 2.95 earned run average. Yeah, best in the American League right now. Should be a heck of a game tomorrow night between Pedro and uh, Hudson. I bet they call him 
Huddy. I'm sure they do. We went for a strike and it's two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two down in the ninth. Osby hits it in the air to left field. Heisdu coming in. The Red Sox have taken the first two games of this three-game series against the Oakland A's, and tonight in impressive fashion as they win seven to one. They're an outstanding defensive effort tonight for Bill Miller, and the Red Sox with three home runs in the game. Now the play of the game is brought to you by Foxwoods Resort and Casino. We're going to see a couple of plays, and in particular by Bill Miller. Diving to his right, a double play that turns him with Bellhorn. And again, a ground ball to his right, diving and throws Chavez out at first base. Bill Miller outstanding defensively at third tonight. The Sox with the win get their 83rd win of the year. They're now 83 and 54. Tonight's game played in front of 29,689. In two hours and 34 minutes, the Red Sox beat the A's 7 to 1. Derek Lowe with the win 14 and 10. Mark Redman takes the loss. He falls under 500 now at 10 and 11. We hope you will join us tomorrow night for game three of this three game series with the A's. Pedro Martinez matched up against Tim Hudson. For Jerry Remy, Don Orsillo saying so long from Networks Associates Coliseum. Again, the final, the Red Sox 7 and the A's 1. The Red Sox have taken the first two of this three-game series. We'll talk to you tomorrow night. Have a good night, everybody.